Hello and welcome to Nikolai's genetics lessons and today's problem is we should compare the melting temperature of two DNA molecules. Here's a problem. Suppose you have two samples of DNA. Sample 1 is 1050 base pairs long and sample 2 is 640 base pairs long. If uh, both have the same percent of GC content, which one has the high melting temperature using the following formula we have to find it. First of all, let me explain some theory first. Imagine that this is double-stranded DNA and uh, what we see here. We see bases which pairs. This is cytosine base pairs with guanine, so C, G, and adenine base pairs with thymine, so A, T bases pairs. Now you also have to understand that For example, between bases cytosine and guanine, we have triple bond, so one, two, three hydrogen bonds, and between adenine and thymine, we have double hydrogen bond. So, as you understand, the more um, GC content of the double-stranded DNA, the more hydrogen bonds we have between two strands of the DNA molecule and the more energy we have to apply in a form of uh, temperature in order to separate these two strands. So this is, I think, very easy to understand. And also take a look at this picture. Here we have a relationship between GC content, guanine cytosine base pairs, Uh, which represented by percentage of the total uh, base pairs in the double-stranded DNA. And here is a temperature on this axis. So let's see. This is linear relationship. For example, if we have 20% of the GC content, the melting point is going to be about maybe 85. And for example, if we would have 60% of a GC content, the melting point is going to be about 100 degrees Celsius. And if, for example, two strands of the DNA, we will have only cytosine and guanine on both strands of the DNA, then melting point is going to be about 120 degrees of Celsius. So this is linear relationship between GC content and the temperature that we need in order to separate these two strands of the DNA. Now let's pay attention to our formula and you would see that this part of the formula doesn't affect our calculations because it's going to be the same for the both sample 1 and sample 2. And the only difference that we are going to have is going to be this part of the formula. We can just do our calculations using this part of the formula in order to find which number is going to be greater. Take a look. Sample 1 has 1050 bases. Sample 1. We have to divide 500 by 1050. And sample 2. Sample 2 has 640 bases, so 500 divided by 640 bases. In the first case, our answer is going to be 0.48. And in the second example, sample 2, our answer is going to be 0.78. No matter what temperature we are going to get in this part of the formula, let's say 80 degrees of Celsius. This shouldn't affect uh, our calculations substantially, affect the temperature, melting temperature. For example, here we have to deduct 0.48 and we are going to get melting temperature as 79.52 uh, degrees of Celsius. And here we are going to get 80 minus 0.78, which will give us 79.22 degrees of Celsius. So you see these numbers are very close 
And what is uh, important actually is not uh, as much as length of the DNA as GC content of the DNA. But of course, if the length of the DNA, two samples of the DNA would be substantially different, we can get a difference which is going to be greater. But again, the purpose of this video was to teach you that the longer double-stranded DNA, the higher on the overall temperature have to be in order to separate two strands of the DNA. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.